If you haven't got the idea yet, our topic today is on listening to the voice of God. Hearing God call our names. Living in such relationship with God that we listen to the still small voice of the Spirit. Now in our gospel reading today, it is easy for us to see that Jesus spoke to Philip because Jesus spoke to Philip. And so, hear the word of God from John chapter 1, verses in, beginning in verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip, and he said to Philip, follow me. Now, it was easy for Philip to hear God, though at this point, Philip may not have known that Jesus was the second person of the Trinity. But Jesus spoke. And Philip heard Jesus speaking. Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Philip. And Philip found Nathanael. And Philip said to him, We have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. It was easy for Nathanael to hear Philip. Because Philip spoke to him. It is easy for you and me to talk to each other, to converse, because we talk and we hear one another. Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You see, Nathaniel still didn't understand who Jesus was. There were some questionings. And Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked him, How did you get to know me? And Jesus answered him, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see the heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our conversations with one another, when we talk to each other, it is easy to hear each other unless I'm distracted and don't want to listen and there are times when I put on my earmuffs and you know I pretend to hear but I don't really hear or I hear but I don't listen or as my dad used to say it goes in one ear and out the other <laughs> but hearing God is maybe a little different for us. Because Philip and finally Nathaniel were in the presence of Jesus. And they heard him. I've never been in the physical presence of Jesus. And I think I can say for sure that you haven't been in the physical presence of Jesus either. We're 2,000 years away from that body of Christ who walked the earth. There's a distance. How do we hear God in the wilderness? How do we hear God 2,000 years away from this man Jesus? At times it's difficult. The world in which we live is a a scary place. There's war. There's rumors of war. There's chaos. There's poverty. There's ignorance. There's disease. We're distracted by all the many things we have in our modern America. When 
All my children were home this year for the first time in three or four years. Jacob lives in China and he finally got to come home because of uh, COVID. And I was noticing that even in their 20s and 30s, my kids still sat in front of the television and played Pokemon and did all these things that, that, that I don't like to play and that I've, I've, I've never really gotten into, but here they were playing all this stuff and, you know, they were talking to each other and they were, they were having fun. It was really kind of fun to look back at them and see them conversing with one another. But there is a distance between my 70 plus years and, and their uh, 30 and a couple of them are reaching 40. There's a distance. And sometimes the communication between the, the generations is difficult, you, you know, in, in the midst of those years. But it was good to be together as family. How do we hear God in the midst of all the noise of culture? In the midst of all the negative attitudes about God that we hear every day. You know, a lot of our children, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying, you know, back when I went to school, I got a little New Testament when I was in elementary school and they handed it out in the classroom and I still have that little Bible. And it, would any of our kids today get a little New Testament in the second or third grade in an elementary school? in the United States? Uh, no. We live in a culture that's more and more secular. How do we hear God in the midst of all that silence? In our Old Testament reading from Samuel, one of the verses says that the word of the Lord was rare in those days visions were not widespread. It seems to me that more and more we are living in that kind of a culture where it is more and more difficult for us and especially for younger generations to hear the still small voice of the holy. Reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under the priest Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow old so that he could not see, was lying down in his room, and the lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was located. And then the Lord called to Samuel. Samuel! Samuel. And Samuel replied, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and he said, Here I am for you called for me. But Eli said, I didn't call for you. Go back and lie down. And so Samuel went and he lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you, my son. Lie down again. And Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. You see, there are times, even when we don't know who God is, that God calls our name. You don't have to know who God is for God to call your name. Even in a dark and mysterious time, even when you're far from the heart of God, God has the ability to reach through the clouds, the fog, the noise, and to call your name. Samuel. Samuel. And the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli. And he said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. 
And therefore Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel went and he lay down in his place. And now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the midst of all the noises, in the midst of all of our secularism, in the midst of all the distrust our society has in a God who is able to reveal the person of God to people like us. In the midst of a day when the voice of God is rare. When we're skeptical. Does God really speak to people today? Do, do people really have visions? Do people really have dreams? Does God really talk? Can God really call my name? Can I really get close to God? Or is, is, just, is, is all it is just religion? Is it just formality? Is it just the laws that Presbytery points down to us. Is it just the, the churchianity of today? Is, is it just the, the book of order? Is, is, it, is, is it just the rules? Or is there a voice behind the rules that searches us? That's difficult to understand that's beyond us, that is different than my, than my scientific mind, than my reasoning mind. Is there a God out there who loves us in the midst of our human chaos? Have you ever got up one morning and you just felt like the world was in chaos all around you and your life was in chaos and you were in disarray and you didn't know what to do and you were frustrated and you, 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 were, you were just like this. And to believe that in the midst of our human chaos if we'll only hear the word of Eli. Samuel, go back to bed. When you hear the voice, tell the voice that you're ready to listen. One of my favorite psalms is the psalm that we read in our responsive reading. It is a psalm that points us beyond ourselves to a God of majesty, to a God of love, to a God of grace, to a God who knew me as a human being and called my name even when I was in my mother's womb. I can hardly imagine that kind of God who is able to reach me and know me even before I was born, who's called my name, who knows my ups and my downs, my good side and my bad side, the things I want people to know about myself and those things that, you know, there's things that I want to hide. God knows those things too. And God still loves me and cares for me as a human being. The final verses of those song, of this psalm, to me is the essence of what it means to hear God. You open yourself to God and you ask God, God, I'm willing to hear your voice. 
I'm willing for you to speak to me. And the psalmist says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in your way that is everlasting. The first time I read this psalm, I think I was a teenager. This has been my prayer my whole life. Lord, I want to hear your still small voice. Have I always heard it? No. But there have been times in the midst of my human chaos when I can say that I have heard the still small voice of the holy. It might have been in a dream. It, it might have been in the midst of a, a crisis moment. It might have been in the midst of a time of trouble when I was afraid. It might have been in, in the midst of a joyful time. But my prayer God, I'm willing for you to speak to me. Even when I don't deserve it, and that's grace, and I need a lot of it. Lord, come and be my friend. Come and speak your word of truth. I'm willing. Here I am. There's a song in the hymn book. I didn't pick it for one of our hymns, but I want to read the first verse. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice soundeth saying, Christian, follow me. I think that's what God wants of people like you and me. In the midst of all of our human crisis, in the midst of all of our human unknowing, to just relax. Or I say, take your shoes off and get comfortable and just allow the still small voice of Jesus to call your name and to hear those words I love you you're my child follow me Let us pray. Father in heaven, look with compassion on us as your children. Help us to hear you call our names. Lord, in our moments of joy, in our moments of human weakness, help us to hear you say those wonderful words you're my child I love you thank you Lord in Jesus name Amen